Okay, this is day 10 of my experience uh, working the intensive care unit in New York City during the COVID crisis. Um, I got to work uh, this morning and once again was so encouraged to see that the eight patients that we're all praying for are still alive, um, still being tended to um, here in the unit. Um, I will tell you that several of them are very critically ill um, and are, are getting close to the end of life. And so um, I just ask you guys to continue to, um, to hold them in their prayers, even if it's for their families um, and their loved ones, um, that God will just be in the midst um, of this difficult um, situation. I guess the uh, other thing is I wanted to tell you guys tonight is um, I'm tired. <laughs> for the Yesterday, for the first time, I uh, kind of admitted that I was scared and I kind of, it was nice to talk through that. But today's probably the first time that I'll admit that I'm tired. Um, for nine of the last 10 days, I've worked 12 or 13 hours a day. And on my day off, I still had to run my business back home. And so um, I'm definitely feeling tired and I'm hoping to uh, get a good night's sleep um, tonight. Um, we got kind of worn out on the unit today. We got five new admissions um, with uh, all sorts of different backgrounds, but everybody um, was COVID positive. And we split them up amongst our teams. And so I took on three um, extra patients that I didn't have yesterday um, and spent a lot of the day running around um, uh, taking care of them. I had one patient in particular that really um, you know, emotionally moved me. He was very successful, high ranking individual in his field and um, contracted COVID. And he's been sick for a couple of weeks. And uh, I knew we were gonna have to intubate him, that he was kind of cycling down. And so I spent some time talking to him, knowing that sometimes uh, when you get intubated, you never wake up. It's probably 70% of our patients um, who get intubated will end up dying. And so um, I spent some time talking to him and um, I won't reveal too much about him, but I told him that um, my son was really interested in his field of study and might want to do that for a living someday. And I told him, uh, I understand you're the big boss, um, that you run the show at your work. And he smiled and laughed a little bit um, and gave me the thumbs up. And uh, I was really happy that I could make him happy, um, you know, towards um, um, towards the end for him. And so we ended up innovating him and I'm, I'm adding him to my prayer list as well. And I pray you guys um, will as well. I have 11 patients now that I'm praying for every day. I pray for all of them, but there's 11 that I've had close contact with where I was taking care of them. And I pray that you will uh, you will pray for those uh, patients for me as well. I was on the news again last night on um, NBC. I, my phone rang and I answered and it was a reporter and he asked if he could ask me questions. And uh, I, I agreed. Um, but I will continue to tell you guys I'm getting uncomfortable with the attention because it's definitely not why I'm doing this. Um, but at the same time, if I can say something that will encourage people and make an impact on them, um, then I'm, o I'm okay with that. But today, as part of my video, instead of focusing so much on me, I really wanted to continue to tell the stories um, of other people. As I walk through the halls and I talk to people and I ask them their stories, I'm blown away um, by how many people have come from all around the country, from Louisiana and Oklahoma and Georgia and St. Louis and all these places and they've come here um, to make a difference. And so I, I did wanna spend a little bit of time and tell their story tonight. So I made a, uh, a slideshow here. Um, we'll show the photos of their faces and um, uh, this will speak for itself. This is uh, Rachel Zimmerman. Um, she worked with me today and she's a physician assistant from Atlanta, um, originally from Michigan. Um, I asked her why she came here and she said she had ICU experience and uh, she felt helpless staying at home, um, that she wanted to come make a difference. Um, she told me when she first got here she was scared, but she's not anymore. Um, and that, you know, you see in the news that the healthcare workers don't have PPE, but um, she wants people to know that we do have PPE and we are protected and she's wearing hers. Um, she told me that her family really didn't want her to come. Um, as a matter of fact, her mom is angry, um, but she wants her mom to know that she's safe. And you can see her wearing her, uh, her shield here and her glasses, and most of the time she was wearing two masks and um, just a wonderful physician assistant.
Here's a picture of uh, Rachel again on the right with uh, her friend Lauren. Uh, Lauren Hill, what a great name. Lauren's from Oklahoma City, um, so another Sooner um, up here in the unit. Lauren said she felt helpless sitting at home. Um, and she kept saying she wanted to come and she wanted to come. And then finally she got off call asking her if she would come. And her husband told her, well, here's your chance. You said you wanted to go. We laughed about that. And I told her my family really wanted me to go too because we just got a really big life insurance policy on me. <laughs> um, of course, we're just kidding. But um, she said she feels a little overwhelmed. Um, lots of patients, lots to do. Uh, but she's learning a ton and she's really happy at how much she's learning and how much she's helping people. Um, when I asked her what made her feel the best about what she's doing, she said she was so happy she was relieving the workload um, from the New Yorkers that are tired. They've been dealing with it for several weeks. When I asked her um, other experiences, she did tell me that her family was really unhappy that she came. Um, and she joked about her husband, but um, she said her, her mother-in-law cried when she heard she was coming and that was really hard for her this guy's got such tender loving eyes um, his name is Basil Asabu and he's a, a rad tech from Harlem um, but originally um, he uh, lived in Ghana and uh, he goes around our floors all day and takes x-rays to make sure that the lungs um, aren't getting worse and making sure our lines are in the right place and he told me that he was very proud to be here he'd only had a job at Bellevue for four or five months but he was proud to fight on the front lines these two guys are awesome on the left is Jason Slade and he's a nurse from Louisiana uh, Westlake actually and uh, he said he felt compelled to come um, there was a crisis and he responded and on the right is Deverell Went. And yes, I did ask her where she went. Um, she laughed. But she's a nurse originally from Jamaica, and she moved to the United States, and she joined the Air Force, and uh, she moved to New York along the way, and then moved away. And she said when she saw the crisis, she had to come back and help her people. She said, my mom lives here, my, my family lives here, of course I'm gonna come. I love this photo. They look so strong, um, they look, uh, they look like COVID can't get anyone um, when they're on watch. This is a picture of a nurse from Dallas. Her name is Cassie Hampton. She's actually a nurse practitioner um, and uh, she came here to work as an RN. Um, she's a mom of four and amazingly, um, every day she works 12 hour days and then figures out a way to manage her kids at home who are doing homeschool. Um, she said every single night she does Zoom and talks to them and makes sure they're, uh, that they're doing their homework and spends time with them. So she's a mom and a teacher and a nurse and a nurse practitioner from Dallas. This was an uh, awesome RN who came to join us um, from uh, North Carolina. Um, he's actually a New Yorker originally living in Brooklyn and moved away. But when the crisis happened, he said he had to come back and help. And, um, you can see the damage um, that the mask, the PPE that we wear uh, do. Um, this was cutting into his nose and in his face and into his chin, um, um, which was quite striking to see. But um, we had a nice conversation because he likes golf, and I told him about my son and their golf, or my sons and their golfing, and um, we had a nice time talking. But he said he was really proud and happy to come back and help his um, fellow New Yorkers. pretty amazing. Um, it's one of the things that I've loved the most about this week is just getting to know the different personalities and the people that have come here um, to sacrifice their own um, health um, to make a difference and uh, oh what a difference they're making. I did want to tell you a funny story. Um, I called a patient today. I call lots of my patients uh, families and um, I talked to this family member for probably 15 minutes and explained every single thing that was going on and answered all the questions and complicated questions and um, did my very best to make sure this person understood exactly what was going on. And I got towards the end and I said, do you have any other questions? And she said, yeah, um, when's the doctor gonna call me? <laughs> and so I, uh, I told her I was the doctor and uh, 
I went back and made a joke that kind of hurt my confidence when <laughs> they, they, they talked to me for 15 minutes and then still wanted a, a real doctor to call them. And so, um, that is kind of the way I felt some this week. Um, I've been a pain management doctor, um, for the last 14 years. So intensive care is definitely not what I do day to day, but it was a funny moment. We all laughed about it when I got back to the kind of war room with the other physicians and physician assistants. Um, I did want to finish with a, uh, with a teaching point. Um, my teaching point for today is stay healthy. I see that the country is talking about reopening and, uh, there's lots of excitement there. Um, and I get that, but I want you guys to be healthy, to stay healthy. Um, what we're seeing in the units is the most uh, common um, medical comorbidities that we see is diabetes, obesity, and hypertension. And so if you have any of these three things, diabetes, obesity, or hypertension, um, these are all controllable um, with diet and exercise. And so I would encourage you guys to use this opportunity to get in the very best health of your life. Um, we may be dealing with waves of this. Um, you know, the Spanish flu in 1918 had three separate waves. It was fall, spring, fall, and we might be looking at spring, fall, spring. And so we could be dealing with waves of this all the way until the spring of 2020. And so use this as an opportunity to get in the best shape of your life. I personally have lost like 20 pounds since COVID started just because I wanted to be in the very best shape to go fight this beast. Um, I recommend that you uh, lose weight if you're not at your ideal body weight, that you try to get um, down to your best goal weight. Uh, I call it my fighting weight. Um, I recommend you start eating healthier. Um, look at the Mediterranean diet if you get a chance. It's evidence-based and lots of data out of Harvard showing that people who eat the Mediterranean diet live longer. Um, take vitamins. Um, definitely exercise. Um, exercise is associated with longevity. If you're a smoker, stop smoking. This is your chance to get in the best health of your life. You don't want to go up against this virus um, having smoke in your lungs. Um, and uh, if you have diabetes, if you can really control your blood sugars, get your weight down as low as you can, um, you're going to do everything you can to prepare yourself um, for success. And one other thing is um, lots of doctors are doing telemedicine visits. So, you know, set up a, a wellness check with your doc and just talk to your doctor about what you can be doing to be your healthiest version of yourself. So that's my teaching point today, which is to be healthy. God bless you guys. Please continue to keep me and my 11 patients in your prayers. I'll talk to you tomorrow.